This is a video of a, of a cat pump uh, opening up the box. This is the smallest pump that cat makes, the very smallest. It's a 1CX series, has a quarter horsepower open drip proof motor, which is, could be a drawback in some situations. So it's pump and motor. And it has capability of 0.13 gallons a minute. And here's the, the label on this particular pump. I guess it's a 1CX013. That indicates it's a one point uh, one uh, three gallons per minute. So that's that pump. We'll open up the box here. Now they do make two other pumps in this in the one CX series. They make a point three GPM and they make a point five GPM. Then they make them also with an option with a pressure uh, pulsation hose, which this one has. You've got some literature on it here, packing. And then here's the pulsation hose. All this does is it fills with water and some air, and it's flexible enough as when the pump rotates, positive displacement pump, it will absorb pulses and not create as much vibration. It's, it is packaged where it is the pump and the motor separately. So you can see here is the pump and then you have the motor over here. You can see the shaft sticking out. And then you have four bolts to bolt the pump to the motor. So it looks like you lift this piece of cardboard up and then there's the motor. So it is, again it's a quarter horsepower. It is open wiring on it, so that means you basically wire to some sort of control panel. That's what that pump looks like. So I'm going to package it back up and uh, I'm going to add some options with it, send it off to a customer. So that should do it. Now we'll add a couple other things here. We'll open up this motor here, it's just wrapped in some plastic. And here it is. So, see there's where the shaft goes in. We have a pressure regulator uh, right here and then there is a bypass hose and a discharge. So really what a customer has to do, or I might do this for the customer, is you have to wire a hose, not wire, connect a connection here, looks like it's a quarter inch connection, here uh, and run a hose back to the inlet to use the bypass. And typically you do want to use the bypass because this is the nut that actually does regulation. It's an Allen hex head on it and then there's the discharge to the pump. So it does have a little plug that's actually in the cap to keep the oil in during shipment. That plug does have to come out after shipment to just to like a pressure relief, pressure regulation valve. Now when you get a cat pump, get this cat pump that I described earlier, all you get is this pump here. This is the 1CX013 ELS. It's the smallest pump that cat makes. This is a 0.13 GPM a minute. But in the manual they'll talk about uh, providing a, a wraparound bypass and maybe putting a gauge in it. Well that's what all these other components are around here. So if you're to do that and you take a look at the diagram that comes with the pump, you know they're, they're going to want you to, here's the input side, they're going to want you to put in uh, and then here's the bypass side. They're going to want you to take a hose and go from this bypass on the output regulator. Make sure I'm on the output regulator here. Bypass and go back into the input. And then this is the discharge that you might want to put a gauge on. So that's what all these parts are around here. Now the inlet is, uh, is 3 8 inch. So if you took like a T like this. And this T happens to have a nipple on it because I didn't have the right branch T or whatever the word for it is. You took a T like this, put that in there, uh, tighten it up, put some Teflon tape or some uh, Loctite on it. And then you've got a, uh, a 90 degree uh, hose bib here that's actually got a 1 quarter to 3 eighths inch juicer. You put that on there and then on the bypass you'd put on this other 90 degree hose bib reducer. Put that on there and then what you'd do is you'd run this hose here in here over to this the input side of the pump. So when you are regulating through this uh, unit for a particular pressure it'll bypass come through this hose here go back to in the input side of the pump. So that's what all these fittings are for. And then you've got a couple of hose clamps here to clamp that on there. And then you might want to take on the output, the output of the unit itself, put another fitting on here. This happens to be a quarter inch fitting. You go on there and you might want to bring it around. And then I got a gauge here. This actually is a eighth inch 
male NPT gauge, zero to 600 PSI. You know, you, if you had a quarter, it would go right in there, but I've got this reducer here that you could put on there. Now you've got a gauge on the output. So that's what it would look like. You know, it gives you an idea of what uh, the bypass system with a gauge would look like on this particular pump. So, so it can be seen a little bit and rotated back around. That's the bottom side of the pump. Here's where the hose would go with a couple of hose bibs. And again, input, nipple, output, bypass, gauge, actual output pressure, bypass on the bottom, back into the input. That's what those fittings are for. Now, one thing I missed on this uh, assembling this pump uh, with a bypass gauge was this actually this pulsation damper. Forgot that was in the box, and that's an important part of uh, assembling the, the pump. Pulsation dampers uh, dampen discharge out of the pump because a pump like this is a positive displacement pump. There's a piston in here. You get pulses, and those pulses pulses are dampened by a expanding hose like this. So, but you could look at it this way too. It, you need this to a degree, this hose to a degree, if your discharge is uh, all solid piping. What I mean by that is if it's stainless steel or if it's copper rigid piping. The pulsations that come out of pump pulses make vibration. So you have some vibration and that's what this pulsation damper eliminates some of the pulses, keeps the vibration down. However, if you're running some plastic tubing, and there are some plastic tubing out there that are, can handle some pretty good pressures and yet are a little bit pliable. You kind of, to a degree, might not need this pulsation damper. You know, there, and there's some plastic nylon tubing out there that are quite rigid where there wasn't, wouldn't be any pulsations. But there is some tubing out there that I've run across that's got some flex to it. And if you run long enough lines out there, the pulsations seem to disappear. But let's take a look at this pulsation damper and see how it would go in so I mean we're just gonna go back to what we had before so you get that on there you know and then you've got this pulsation damper that would screw into that T there it is so now if you take a look at this whole thing you know we've got this, this sitting right here like this and then the motor couples onto here so the motors out here like this black motor and then this stuff comes along the side of the motor and you've got your in, your discharge and then out front here you've got your uh, your input and then your bypass line would go in there like that so that's the way it looks you know again uh, all that cat pumps is supply is this is this pump and this regulator so we're adding some input piping to it and bypass piping and some output tees of gauge and pulsation damper. And those are kind of some of the accessories that go on these packages before you go out to your tubing itself. And here is this pump in more a more completed stage. You saw all the parts and here it is with all the parts put together. If you take a look at this here, you've got uh, the pump itself. This is the input side. You got a T here with a little nipple, and you got a T here. And what we've got here is a temperature sensor for the bypass. That's kind of an option I'm putting on for this particular pump. It's not necessary. All you'd have to do is plug that port, I guess, to, to not get it, or just you know, pump pump in the bypass. But the bypass itself, well, you can see here's the word bypass. This is the discharge. This is the regulating valve with a bypass. And then here's a, a 90 degree barb fitting that actually goes back to the inlet to this 90 degree L over here. So then out of the discharge here, here's the regulation Allen nut. We've got a gauge and then we've got this pulsation damper. And then we've got the output here. You know, output here's this is the wiring going into the pump. The output would come out this way. This pulsation damper will probably go something like this, get tied down possibly. I think that's the way I'll do it. But this is kind of a pump with some of the accessories ready to go. Uh, kind of like I showed in the other video. Uh, we'll turn it over on its side so you can actually see the the uh, bypass line coming back. Uh, again, the temperature sensor. 
This is a uh, voltage temperature sensor that goes back to a controller and there's a bulb that actually goes right into up into about that point right there. Yeah, that's kind of what it's going to look like. So we'll look at it from that end. Okay, that's it. A little air too to help the dampening. But what I'm going to do is to you know, tie this off actually. I'm going to come over here and uh, tie it like that so it's kind of out of the way but secure. So I'll tie it up and I'll show it to you. There, a couple of wire ties. That works pretty good. What it looks like. That's, that's good. Alright, that'll do it.